precious metals manipulation, treasury bond bubbles, auto bubbles, student loan bubbles, derivative bubbles. We're looking at all of this and we are seeing a complete breakdown of the system. There's no other way to look at this at this point. Because as we continually move along here, what have we noticed? We have noticed that the economy continually breaks down. We don't hear, oh, Macy's is expanding. Finish Line is opening new stores. Sports Authority is expanding. Sears and Kmart, they're doing fine now. They're expanding. Caterpillar, sales are increasing. IBM, sales are out of this world. We don't hear any of this. What do we hear? We hear sales are continually declining. Not one month, two months, three months. 36 months. We are continually seeing retail stores close. We're seeing them go bankrupt. People losing their jobs. We see corporations laying off individuals, not by 10, 20, 30 at a time. We're looking at thousands of people at a time. This is an economy that is continually breaking apart. We see manufacturing continually declining. Corporate defaults are rising. I mean, look at this today. We know that Sears and Kmart, they're in trouble, just like Macy's and all the other retail outlets. Even the online shopping, not doing as well as everyone wants you to believe. But we see that Sears right now, they are closing more stores, 17. I mean, just in the beginning of this year, Sears shut down 80 of their stores. And this was their announcement in July. Now they're closing 17 more Kmarts. This means more and more people are going to be losing their jobs. Now, if retail stores are closing or going bankrupt and completely disappearing, where is everyone going to get a job? This is the problem. And we can see this through retail sales. We can see this through housing sales. We can see this through unemployment. I mean, if you look past their manipulation and how they uh, massage and the numbers, you can really see what they're doing by not counting those people who really can't find a job anymore. And of course, what we have is the government trying to push TPP, TTIP, right now to make everyone believe that they're going to make things even better. But that is going to make it work worse. If we look at NAFTA, they told us we're, they're going to create thousands upon thousands of jobs. But what do we see? We see Ford and other manufacturers leaving this country, taking their entire operation moving it to other countries. We've lost 800,000 manufacturing jobs with NAFTA. It did not benefit the people of the United States. It actually made it worse. We're losing manufacturing jobs. And we see out in Germany, well, they don't want the TTIP. We know they've been protesting. And there was just this huge protest out there. Hundreds of thousands of Germans, they went out and they were protesting the trade agreement with the U.S. and Canada. Because remember, there's two of them. They have a backup plan. And we can see right now, they're saying, no, if we allow this to happen, our countries are done. But we know their whole plan is to take over every single country by using this court system, which is outside of the government, which controls the government on what they can do, controls the people in what they can do. And that core system is the ISDS. And we can see that as this system continually breaks down, the US government, the central bankers, they're going to become more and more desperate in pushing these draconian laws, creating false flags, regime change. And we are seeing this. We mentioned in the Philippines where Rodrigo Duterte he doesn't want the U.S. there. And we need to look at the background of what is happening there. Now, Rodrigo, he was elected 
on his platform that he was going to wage war on drugs and return pride to the Philippines if the people elected him. So with less than three months in office, he's already making astounding progress on removing the drug problem from his country. 700,000 drug addicts and pushers have surrendered to the authorities, around 3,000 being killed for violently resisting and endangering the arresting officers' lives. Those people who are caught with drugs, well, they're taken care of. And we have to understand what the U.S. involvement is in the Philippines. It's not just with military assets and aid. They're also running a drug operation inside the Philippines through the CIA. And we can see right now, Rodrigo Duterte is pivoting away from the U.S. And the U.S. right now, if you really listen to what they're doing, they're intensifying the media campaign in calling him a dictator. Now, this is the beginning steps of what they normally do to replace the leader. It's called regime change. And we're heading down this path. And we can see right now is that the U.S. is pulling out all the stops trying to smear Duterte as a rogue third world dictator. And right now you can see the first step is preconditioning the public on why he needs to be removed. Because the U.S. sees the, right, sees the writing on the wall. They know that he is going to tell them, he's already done this, remove military assets. We don't want aid. We don't want the U.S. in our country. Now, he just said this, but we can see he's going to put this into action. And the U.S. will not let this happen. So we're going to see, most likely, regime change in the Philippines. We see right now Russia has been calling on the United States to release the information on the ceasefire. And the United States came out and said, we are not prepared to publicly publish the details of the ceasefire whatsoever. And this was announced from U.S. Department of State spokesman John Kirby. And we know why they don't want this release, because it shows that the United States government, central bankers, have been providing weapons, funding, and supporting, and hiring, and training the terrorists. And they don't want this information out there, even though it, it really is out there already. They don't want it released to the public and to their coalition forces who don't understand what's really going on. We see the United States, well, they flew in and they hit the Syrian army. Now, this was in Deir al-Zor, and there was a huge battle going on between the Syrian army and the Islamic State. And the U.S. flew in and they killed around 62 soldiers, and it might be as high as 80 or so. Now, the United States is claiming they knew nothing about um, who was on either side. It was a mistake. We apologize for it. But we can see why they were doing it, because there was a strategic location, and this is the Thardai Mountain area near Deir el-Zor, near the border of Iraq, and they didn't want to give up this position right here. And you have to remember, the United States government central bankers, they weren't invited into Syria. They invaded a sovereign country. And the United States is kind of losing their credibility. Actually, not kind of. They have lost their credibility with this because this whole ceasefire deal was to keep Russia informed of where they were striking, where they were bombing. And guess what? For this one attack, they didn't let them know. They didn't let them know that this is where they were going to be. This is where they were going to attack. So it looks like this was actually on purpose because the Syrian armed forces, they were pushed back. And it proves that the U.S. is really not serious about fighting terror which we already know. And we can see already with this act, the ceasefire is really starting to break down. Now, we see that they don't want the Syrian army to take control of the border regions with Iraq. 
because this is where a lot of supplies come in. Same thing with Turkey, because they have different entry points. The Golan Heights um, with Israel, they have Iraq, where they have shipments coming in. They also have Turkey, where they bring in uh, the terrorist groups. So we can see they have many different access points, and they don't want to lose these. So they needed to do something at this point to control the situation. So Russia, well, they're calling for an emergency UN Security Council meeting regarding the bombing in this area. And we can see right now that Russia is looking at the situation and saying this was absolutely done on purpose. And we can see already that this is an act of war with the Syrian government by the United States. They're in a country which they were never invited in. They invaded a country and they set up bases. They're making bombing runs to stop terrorists in another country, which they're not supposed to be there. And then they hit the armed forces of that country. Let's switch this around. They're telling us there's terrorism here in the United States where we have the San Bernardino shooter, he's radicalized, and we have all these people. If the Syrian armed forces said, you know something, we're going to go into the um, United States or any other country, Canada, Mexico, it doesn't make a difference, and we're going to stop these terrorists inside the United States, and they were in here bombing, would that be all right? What's wrong with that picture? And then, as they're bombing the Islamic State in the United States, they accidentally hit the U.S. military who's also fighting in the United States. Would that be seen as an act of war? Especially since the Mexicans, the, the Canadians, or the Syrians, or maybe the Russians, weren't even invited into the United States? Well, this is the same situation in Syria. So we can see right now that this situation is getting worse, and it is accelerating, because they, they're at the losing end of this deal. They're losing control of the Middle East. And we've been talking about this for quite a while. The petrodollar is threatened. And they know this. And they're getting worried. Think about Libya. Think about Yemen. Think about Iraq, Lebanon. And they were supposed to go to Syria, to Iran. And the whole thing is just falling apart. And we realize that what has happened is all over the place. But what's very interesting, I mean, it was all over the corporate media. Because you, you, you just couldn't hide this. But what's very interesting, as this attack happened, all of a sudden, we had a pipe bomb in New Jersey. We had an explosion in New York in a garbage can. And I think the one in New Jersey was also a pipe bomb in a plastic garbage can. We had an individual in Minnesota who went on a stabbing spree asking people if they're a Muslim and referenced Allah. I guess they'll be taking away knives now. All is happening at the same time. Now, those stories, especially the one in New York, is the front page news. The one about Syria is off the grid. They're not even showing that anymore. So this was done on purpose to get rid of that story. Now, is there another agenda associated with this? Well, if we really look at what happened in New York... We see the bomb in New York was in a metal trash can. And it was Saturday night at 8.30. There were about 29 people that were injured. Nobody was killed. And then they found a second IED. Looked like a pressure cooker. They had wires sticking out. Actually, most likely it wasn't even ready to go off or it probably wasn't even real. Looks like it wasn't even put together correctly. And we had these other incidences happening around the United States. Now, we have many things going on here. This is, of course, as we know, is a distraction. And we can see right now, this distraction was to get that new story of what happened in Syria off the front page. The other part of this is, is this the buildup to postpone the elections? Because this is the beginning stages. Now, we will know if this is set for two different agendas. Well, the one we already know because they took the news story right off the front page of what happened in Syria. So that's gone. If we see more of these little type 
of explosions. And you can tell they place it in garbage cans away from different areas Saturday night. It, it was like a last minute type of thing. If we see more of these type of little incidences, making sure they don't kill anyone or nothing really um, uh, happens to structures around the area, just to create fear, if we see more of this around the country, this agenda is the build up to postpone the elections. If this just a one time off thing, this was a distraction to get what happened in Syria off the front page of the news. To get rid of it, to distract people away from it. So this is something that we're going to have to watch because there was a lot of things happening all at once on a Saturday leading in late afternoon into the evening. So let's watch to see if this accelerates, because if it does accelerate and we see more of these around the country leading up to the elections, they're getting prepared for something much, much larger. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot. continually breaking apart. We see manufacturing continually declining. Corporate defaults are rising. I mean, look at this today. We know that Sears and Kmart, they're in trouble, just like Macy's and all the other retail outlets. Even the online shopping, not doing as well as everyone wants you to believe. But we see that Sears right now, they are closing more stores, 17 I mean, just in the beginning of this year, Sears shut down 80 of their stores. And this was their announcement in July. Now they're closing 17 more Kmarts. This means more and more people are going to be losing their jobs. Now, if, like, things even better. But that is going to make it work worse. If we look at NAFTA, they told us we're, they're going to create thousands upon thousands of jobs. But what do we see? We see Ford and other manufacturers leaving this country, taking their entire operation, moving it to other countries. We've lost 800,000 manufacturing jobs with NAFTA. It did not benefit the people of the United States. It actually made it worse. We're losing manufacturing jobs. And we see out in Germany, well, they don't want the TTIP. We know they've been protesting. And there was just this huge protest out there. Hundreds of thousands of Germans... They went out and they were Caterpillar. Sales are increasing. IBM. Sales are out of this world. We don't hear any of this. What do we hear? We hear sales are continually declining. Not one month, two months, three months. 36 months. We are continually seeing retail stores close. We're seeing them go bankrupt, people losing their jobs. We see corporations laying off individuals, not by 10, 20, 30 at a time. We're looking at thousands of people at a time. This is an economy that is con precious metals manipulation, treasury bond bubbles, auto bubbles, student loan bubbles, derivative bubbles. We're looking at all of this and we are seeing a complete breakdown of the system. There's no other way to look at this at this point. Because as we continually move along here, what have we noticed? We have noticed that the economy continually breaks down. We don't hear, oh, Macy's is expanding. Finish Line is opening new stores. Sports Authority is expanding. Sears and Kmart they're doing fine now. They're expanding. Retail stores are closing or going bankrupt and completely disappearing. Where is everyone going to get a job? This is the problem. And we can see this through retail sales. We can see this through 
housing sales. We can see this through unemployment. I mean, if you look past their manipulation and how they uh, massage in the numbers, you can really see what they're doing by not counting those people who really can't find a job anymore. And of course, what we have is the government trying to push TPP, TTIP right now to make everyone believe that they're going to 